So today we are going to look at the final lesson in this unit, which is lesson 6-6. -6. So there are two different methods that we could solve equations that have fractions in them. Method one is by using proportions. You can only use this method if you have a fraction, so it might look like A over B equals a fraction, C over D. So one fraction equals a fraction. And then, of course, we already know that cross products, so if I multiply B times C, I would get BC, and A times D, I would get AD. So with proportions, cross products are equal. And so here you can see you have one fraction equaling one fraction. We can just use cross products. You can only use method one if you have one fraction equaling one fraction. So if there's more than two terms, in your problem, you will not be able to use method one. Method two would be using a least common denominator. That means that you're gonna multiply every term in the equation by the least common denominator, and you can get rid of your bottoms of your fractions. You can use this method 100% of the time. This method takes more work, and so it does take longer, but you can use this for every problem. So I'm gonna do three problems on the front of this for you. And so we're gonna start off, if that's crooked, that would really bother me if I were you. We're gonna start off with this problem here. So we have a fraction equaling a fraction. So you might wanna to write to yourself for your notes to cross multiply. So I'm gonna write more work than I normally would just because it's for your notes. So I'm gonna multiply the seven times the x and the four times the x minus six. It does not matter which side you put on which. So four times the x minus six is equal to the seven minus the x, or seven times the x. Then we're going to distribute our four, and we just solve like any normal equation. So I get four x, and then four times negative six is negative 24. Seven times x is seven x. And then to solve, of course, we will subtract four x. And I get negative 24 is equal to three x. I don't like my x on the right, so I'm gonna switch it around. And then I'm gonna divide by three. I don't like my x on the right, so I like it on the left. So I get x is equal to negative eight. So you still have to look at restrictions. So if you remember, restrictions come from the denominator. The denominator of a fraction cannot equal zero. So our restrictions here would be x cannot equal, if you set this equal to zero, you would add six. So x cannot equal six. And anytime you have a monomial, the variable cannot equal zero. So I have to look at my answer and make sure that it's not any one of my restrictions. So negative eight is not any of my restrictions, so that's a good solution. The other thing that you'll be asked to do is to check your solution. To be perfectly honest, I don't typically check my solution when I'm doing homework, but I will 100% of the time when I'm taking my test. So I will do the check for this one particular problem only, and then you're not gonna see me do the check again. That's gonna be on your own for when you're taking a test or whenever you just want to check your answer. So we're going to go to the original problem and wherever I have an X, I'm going to put in my answer. So instead of an X, I'm going to put in a negative eight here and here. Then you just work each side separately. So negative eight minus six would be seven over negative 14 equals four over negative eight. Then you have an option. You can either do cross products and set them equal to each other. If they're equal, then the check works. Or you can reduce these fractions and see if you get the same number. So seven over negative 14 reduces to one over negative two. And four over negative eight reduces to one over negative two. Since the left side equals the right side, it checks. All right, so what I want you to do is pause the video and do number two. Before you pause, the only thing you have to remember is you're taking a three times this binomial and a seven times this binomial. Just make sure that you distribute all the way through those binomials. So go ahead and pause. 
Okay, so if I use my cross, cross products, I've got 3 times 2a plus 1 equals 7 times a minus 8. And then I'm going to distribute into the parentheses, so I get 6a. Don't forget to distribute the 3 to the 1, so you get 3. Distribute 7 all the way through, so you get 7a. 7 times 8 is 56. Focus on your variables. 6a is smaller, so I'm going to subtract 6a from both sides. And I get 3 is equal to a minus 56. Add 56. And then I get 59 is equal to a, so a is equal to 59. Then check. What are my restrictions here? So I'm going to put my restrictions up here so a cannot equal. So if I set this equal to 0, I would add 8. So a cannot equal 8. And if I set this equal to 0, I would subtract 1. And I would divide by 2. So I get negative 1 half. Fortunately, 59 is neither 8 nor negative 1 half. So it is a good solution. I will leave the check up to you. So then we're going to move on to number 4 because I find it more difficult than 3. And the reason for this is you're going to end up having to factor. So let's look at our cross products. So we're going to multiply this binomial to this binomial and 3 to the 8. So let's write that out. So I have m plus 3 being multiplied to m minus 2, and the other cross product is 3 times 8. So we're going to distribute. m times m is m squared. m times negative 2 is negative 2m. 3 times m is a positive 3m, and 3 times negative 2 is a negative 6. And then equals 3 times 8 is 24. If I collect like terms on the left, these two are like terms. They will combine and give me a positive m. So I have m squared plus m minus 6 is equal to 24. So this one's a little bit more difficult because you have an m squared and an m. So these are not like terms. And anytime we have a squared term and a non-squared term, you're going to want to set one side equal to 0. So we have to move the 24 over and we're going to end up factoring. So we get m squared plus m, a negative 6 and a negative 24 is a negative 30 equals 0. Now we're going to factor this. We don't need to swing multiply. So the m squared becomes m and m. But then you have to ask yourself, what factors of 30 subtract to give you a 1? So the only factors of 30 that subtract to give you 1 are 5 and 6. 6 is the bigger of the 2, so it carries the same sign as the middle term. The 5 is going to have to be negative. So then let's solve. You're going to have to set that, this is a parentheses there. You're going to have to set the m minus 5 equal to 0 and the m plus 6 equal to 0. So that means m will equal 5 or and or m will equal negative 6 if you solve those. Let's look at our restrictions. What can m not equal? So here there's no restriction because there's no variable here. But here if we set that equal to 0 we would add 2. So m cannot equal 2. Neither one of these are 2 so they will both be a good solution. So there are actually two answers for M. Okay, so let's look at three problems on this side. Because on, on this side of your notes, you are no longer going to be able to use method one, which is the proportion method where you could cross multiply because you've got three fractions. 
And so you're going to have to use the second method, which is finding the least common denominator. So we found the least common denominator in lesson 6-4. So if you need a review of that, you'll have to go back to lesson 6-4. But here we go, we're gonna find the LCD. So when you find the LCD, you wanna make sure that each of your denominators are fully factored. If it's a monomial, like all three of these are, you wanna make sure that the numbers are prime factored. So three is prime, you can't do anything with N, and six becomes two times three. So the different factors that I see in my LCD, in my denominators here are twos, threes, and Ns. So I have to have at least one two, one three, and one N in my LCD. Then ask yourself for the two, which of these three has the most twos? Well, it's this one, and it only has one two, so only one two goes in your LCD. For the three, which of these has the most threes? These two both are tied, and they're tied at one three, so only one three goes in your LCD. For the N, this is the only denominator with an N, and it only has one, so only one goes in your LCD. So your LCD is 6N. So I want to make each, actually I don't want to do that, I wanna get rid of each of these denominators. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take each of these terms and I'm gonna multiply them by 6N. So you're gonna see me rewriting this problem down here, but I'm going to put 6N over one in front of each of these. So here we go, 6N over one, is going to get multiplied to 4 over 3 minus 6n over 1 is going to get multiplied to the next term 7 over n equals 6n over 1 is going to get multiplied to 1 over 6 so let me just backtrack my 6n comes from the LCD I took 4 thirds and multiplied it by 6n. I took negative 7 over n, here's your negative 7 over n, and multiplied it by the LCD of 6n. Equals, equals. I took 1 sixth and multiplied it by the LCD of 6n. The purpose of this is that each of these denominators should cancel with the 6n upstairs in some way. So here you can either say 6 is divisible by 3, or you can say that both of these I can divide by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1, 6 divided by 3 is 2. And that leaves you with a 2 times n times 4. 2 times n times 4 is 8n. Then the n's here are going to cancel, 1 for 1. So you're left with negative 6 times 7, which gives you a negative 42 equals, then here the sixes are going to cancel one for one, and you are left with n times one, which is n. So as you can see, I no longer have any denominators, and this is going to be pretty simple to solve. Normally I would subtract n from both sides, but that's gonna leave a zero on this side, and oftentimes you guys lose your equal sign when you do that. So instead, I'm gonna move the 8n over here by subtracting it. So minus 8n, minus 8n. Remember this is a 1n here. So I'm gonna bring down the 42 equals. One minus eight is a negative seven n. I'm gonna flip around the negative 7n and the negative 42 because I want my n on the left. We're gonna divide both sides by negative seven. And I get n is equal to positive six. Before we accept this as an answer, you need to go back up here, look at your least common denominator because it is comprised of all of these, and look to see what would make that zero. If you were to solve this, it's a monomial. Remember, any monomial, the variables cannot equal zero. Since our answer is not zero, six is a good solution. So then you go ahead and do eight on your own. So pause the video and try eight all by yourself. 
All right, so your least common denominator, all of your denominators here are fully factored. This is a prime number and you can't do anything with k's. So the different factors that I see are k's and twos. So I get a two and a k. For the two, this is the one that has the most twos and there's only one. For the k, these are tied at one k a piece, so there's only one k in our LCD. So two times k is two k. So then I'm gonna multiply each of these by 2k over one. So 2k over one times three over k minus 2k over one times one half equals 2k over one times 12 over k. So to recap, here's your original. There's the three over K. This is the minus. There's the one half equals 12 over K. So all three of these got multiplied by the LCD of two K over one. All of these denominators should cancel with something in the two K. So right here, the K's are gonna cancel one for one. And you're left with two times three is six. Because it's now over one, we can ignore that denominator. This two is gonna cancel one for one. And you're left with a negative times K times one, which is a negative K equals. And then the K's here cancel one for one. And you are left with two times 12, which is 24. Then to solve for k, that negative belongs to the k. We are going to subtract 6 from both sides. You've got negative k equals 18. Because the coefficient of k is technically a negative 1, you're going to divide both sides by negative 1. And you get k is equal to negative 18. Check your restrictions. Restrictions are on the least common denominator because it's made up of your um, denominator. So k cannot equal zero because that's a monomial. No variables in the monomial can be zero. Our answer is not zero, so it's a good solution. All right, the last two that I'm going to do are nine and ten. Nine is a bit hairy, so I think what I'm going to do is start with ten and I'll go back to nine because nine is actually much more difficult than ten. So for ten, we're going to start with factoring each denominator. So for the first denominator, I can pull out a greatest common factor of three, and if I divide each of the terms by three, I get w minus one. The second denominator cannot be factored. The third denominator of nine can be prime factored to three squared. So in my LCD, I see different factors. Three is a factor, w minus one is a factor. Factors are things that get multiplied and then I still have a three W minus one. So there's only two different types of factors, threes and W minus ones. So for the threes, these are the two terms that have threes, but this has the most threes. And since there's two threes, I have to have a three squared and my least common denominator. Then for the W minus one, these two both have a W minus one and they're tied at one. So I only have one here. So my LCD is nine times W minus one. So then I wanna go and multiply each of these three terms by nine times W minus one over one. So here we go, let the fun begin. So nine times W minus one over one times 13 over, and I'm gonna put the factored form of three times W minus one minus nine times w minus one over one times the second term of one over w minus one equals nine times w minus one over one times the last term of w over nine. So just to recap, I know it looks complicated, but here's your original first term minus 
1 over w minus 1 equals and then w over 9. And then all I did was multiply each of those three by the LCD. All of these denominators should cancel with something in that LCD. So let's look. So for the first term, the w minus 1s are going to cancel 1 for 1. So that's not a problem. And then for the 9 and the 3, you can divide both of those by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So you are left with a 3 times 13. So 3 times 13. We'll multiply that later. Then over here, only the w minus 1s cancel, 1 for 1. So you are left with a negative 9 times 1. We're going to go ahead and multiply that one out, which is negative 9 equals. And then here, only your 9s cancel, 1 for 1. But you're left with a w minus 1 times a w. Please put your monomials in front of that binomial. So I'm going to write it as w times w minus 1. So then we're going to perform the math. So we're going to multiply this together and distribute the w into here. So 3 times 13 is 39 minus 9 is w times w is w squared. And w times negative 1 is negative w. Then I need to get... Since my w squared is over here and it's positive, I need to get all of this over here. But first, I'm going to actually perform that subtraction. So 39 minus 9 is 30 equals w squared minus w. So now I'm going to set one side equal to 0 by subtracting the 30. I get 0 equals w squared minus w minus 30. You'll need to factor. So the w squared becomes w and w, then read it backwards. What factors of 30 subtract to give you 1? That would be 5 and 6. 6 is bigger, so it carries the sign of the middle term. 5 is going to have to be positive. So when you set w plus 5 equal to 0 and w minus 6 equal to 0 and solve, you will get w equals negative 5 and w equals 6. Go back and look at your restrictions here. 9 is not going to cause a restriction. There are no variables in 9. But in w minus 1, you will get a restriction where w cannot equal 1 because you have to have 1. You would add 1 to both sides if you set it equal to 0 to solve. So since neither one of my w's are 1, this is a good solution. So then let's do our final problem, which is 9. It's a bit hairy and involved, so write small. And so let's start with factoring our denominator so we can find our least common denominator. So p minus 2 has no GCF, and it just can't be factored, so that's it. The 2 does not have a denominator. This is the difference of two squares. So it factors as p plus 2, p minus 2. So for my LCD, the different factors that I see are p plus 2, and p minus 2. They both have the same number of p minus 2's, so they're tied at 1, so 1 goes in here, and this is the only one that has a p plus 2, and it is only 1. So this becomes our LCD. All right, so I'm going to take each one of these terms and multiply them by this over 1. So it does seem to be a little hairy, it gets very long, so I'm going to try to write small and fit it in here. I'm going to multiply it to the first term. And I don't necessarily have to put the 2 over 1 because I'm not multiplying it with a fraction, but I will just to make everything the same. And 
And then for this one, I am going to write the factored form of the denominator. Whew, I fit it all in there. Okay, so before I start doing all the canceling, let me show you what, what happened. So this is your first term. Here it is. Plus, plus. Second term is 2. Here it is. Equals, equals. And here's your last term right here. And then each of those three terms got multiplied by the LCD of P plus 2, P minus 2. So then you should have denominators. All of these denominators should cancel with something in that um, least common denominator. So here the P minus 2s are going to cancel. One for one. So P minus 2 and P minus 2. That's going to leave you with a P and a P plus 2. So please put that P in front of that binomial. Then for this one, nothing cancels because we don't have any denominators. So it's just these times this. But I'm going to take this monomial and put it in front because we like to see our monomials first and then the binomials. It doesn't matter what order we multiply them. But we're going to put the 2 in front and then P plus 2, P minus 2 equals. But the good news is here, all of these are going to cancel with all of these and you're just going to be left with that 8. So P plus 2, P plus 2, P minus 2, P minus 2, and you're just left with this 8. So that's nice. So then we are going to um, clear all these parentheses by multiplying or distributing. So I'm going to distribute the P into here all the way. So P times P is P squared. P times 2 is 2P plus... And then for this one, you, you've got three things being multiplied, the two, this one, and this one. So you can only multiply two at a time. So I suggest you multiply these two together right here. So we're going to multiply these together first because you know that the p squared minus 4 is what you got, is what you started with when you factored it this way. So if this is what you got when you factored p squared minus 4, if you multiply this, shouldn't you get p squared minus 4? So there's really no need to actually have to multiply because you should know where that came from. So this is coming from the p squared minus 4 that we originally factored it from. If you don't believe me, go ahead and double distribute the p plus 2 into the p minus 2. Then we still have this that we need to distribute through. So p squared plus 2p. 2 times p squared is a positive 2p squared. 2 times negative 4 is a negative 8 equals 8. Combine like terms. p squared and 2p squared. 1 plus 2 is 3p squared. There is no like term to 2p, so plus 2p. And then... For here, let's go ahead and get one side equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract 8. And so we end up with a minus 16 equals zero. Now, we want to factor. There is no GCF, so I'm going to have to swing multiply. So I'm going to multiply this 3 to the 16. That's going to create a new trinomial of p squared plus 2p minus 3 times 16 is 48 equals 0. Then this is going to multiply into two binomials, or factor into two binomials. p squared becomes p and p. Then read it backwards. The factors of 48 that subtract to give you 2 would be 6 and 8. 8 is bigger, so it carries the sign of the middle term. P is going to have to be negative. But don't forget, since we multiply by 3, we've got to go back and divide by 3. So this gets divided by 3, and this by 3. And so, for the first one, I get P minus 2. But for the second one, this 3 does not divide into the 8, so it's going to get popped in front. So you get a 3P plus 8 equals 0. And now, I can set each of those equal to zero and solve. So P minus 2 is going to set equal to zero. And 
3p plus 8 will get set equal to 0. So the first one, if I add 2, I get p is equal to 2. For the second one, I have to subtract 8, so I get negative 8, and then divide by 3, so I get negative 8 over 3. So again, I have two answers. So I've got to go back and look at my restrictions. So up here, I've got to set each of those equal to 0. So for this one, p cannot equal negative 2. And for the second one, if you add 2, p cannot equal positive 2. Well, because this is one of my restrictions, we're going to have to eliminate it. So this one gets eliminated. This one is not one of my restrictions, so negative 8 over 3 is a good solution. And I'm going to stop there. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Um, the full notes are online on my website. Have a good day.